Goodyear is known for designing and manufacturing various types of tires, most of which are related to rubber. However, its subsidiary, Goodyear Aerospace, has also made significant achievements in the field of aircraft design and manufacturing. In the mid-1950s, this subsidiary even developed a specially designed inflatable aircraft. In fact, the concept of inflatable aircraft has been around for a long time. Shortly after the end of World War I, a plane crash led to the first idea of an inflatable aircraft. At that time, people envisioned that an inflatable aircraft would not shatter upon impact when it crashed, but would instead act as a cushion to protect the personnel on board. In the 1930s, someone actually built an inflatable glider and conducted some experiments. Goodyear's inflatable aircraft was not designed with survival in mind, but rather to have a small size after being folded, making it suitable for carrying out special missions. For example, it could be used for special agent retreats, airborne reconnaissance in specific environments, and more. It was a specialized aircraft. Of course, this idea was not originally the creation of Americans. For example, the British designed an inflatable aircraft called the ML Light Aircraft Mark I in the early 1950s, but for certain reasons, it was not put into actual production or service. The primary issue facing Goodyear was the material problem, how to ensure that the aircraft was flexible and easy to fold, but also had sufficient rigidity to maintain its shape after inflation. The company developed a special three-layer sandwich structure for the inflatable material, which consisted of two different rubber layers sandwiching a layer of nylon mesh. This material, when inflated, would allow the nylon to come into contact with the air, and after absorbing the moisture from the air, it would harden, thus increasing its strength. Originally, Goodyear designed a single-seat inflatable aircraft. Its aerodynamic shape was similar to a glider, and after being inflated, it had a straight-high monoplane. The aircraft only had a small amount of metal support in key areas such as the cockpit, engine support frame, and landing gear. The aircraft was equipped with a 40-horsepower piston engine mounted on the back of the aircraft by a simple bracket. This engine not only powered the propeller for flight, but also drove the pump to inflate the aircraft. During flight, it maintained its inflated state to maintain the shape of the aircraft. The aircraft could withstand damage from several rounds of standard ammunition, and continuous inflation could compensate for gas leaks from punctures. This single-seat inflatable aircraft was approximately 6 meters long, had a wingspan of about 6.7 meters, and weighed 102 kilograms when empty. After being folded, it could fit into a 1.25 cubic meters box, making it suitable for airdropping to special personnel. It took about five minutes to deploy the aircraft, and the pilot had to manually start the engine. The aircraft could carry 76 liters of fuel, support a flight of over 600 kilometers, carry a maximum load of 110 kilograms, reach a maximum speed of 116 kilometers per hour, have a maximum altitude of 3,000 meters, and require a takeoff and landing distance of no more than 100 meters. This aircraft was the most successful inflatable aircraft, and with the support of the U.S. military, Goodyear continued to manufacture an additional 10 aircraft, which were given a new designation, GA-468. These subsequent aircraft had different designs and structural changes, with some being capable of taking off and landing on water, and others on snow. There was also a two-seater version called the GA-466. A flight accident in 1959 may have led to the termination of Goodyear's inflatable aircraft project. At that time, the pilot attempted to perform aggressive maneuvers, which resulted in one wing bending upward and being torn and deflated by the propeller. This caused the aircraft to enter an uncontrollable spiral. The pilot attempted to parachute out of the open cockpit, but the engine collapsed forward, leaving him with no chance to escape. Goodyear announced in the fall of that year that it would permanently halt the inflatable aircraft project and would no longer produce the special inflatable material for this type of aircraft.